Unfortunately, I do think that I've been on a negative streak on the channel lately, and so today, I wanted to talk about something really positive that I'm excited for, Epic Universe. I've said it many times, and I'll say it again to reinforce the point here, other than a few missteps with VillainCon and DreamWorks Land, Universal has absolutely been establishing themselves as the new revolution in themed entertainment, going above and beyond over the past five years with some of the best rides and attractions that I've ever seen. It made me hopeful that Epic Universe would truly be an industry game changer, and with rumors and now promotional material pretty much confirming that this is likely going to be the case, it's actually astounding how zealously creative this park appears to be. I've been to Super Nintendo World in Hollywood, which, small issues aside, is genuinely great, and now to get the real full land with Donkey Kong Country, I predict it will resonate extremely well. The park's hub looks relaxing and enchantingly kinetic, and while most people never would have asked for a land themed to the How to Train Your Dragon franchise, between the promotional material and the model in the preview center, it's clear that this may be one of the coolest lands ever built. As someone who knows nothing about these films, and yes, I promise I will watch them, stop telling me how good they are, I believe you, this land looks incredibly well thought out with clever kinetic elements, incredible sightlines, and in general, a really balanced attraction lineup that reinforces the role of you literally training to ride dragons. A point I often make is that good land and ride design will always do a lot more than the strength of a brand or intellectual property to draw people in, which Universal has really conveyed just through the promotional material. That's why I'm also excited for the new Wizarding World land themed to Paris, as even though details are scarce, the model shows a land literally designed on an unprecedented scale. Most important to this video is the recent reveal of Dark Universe, home of the Universal Monsters, which of course also looks stunning. It's clear that Universal isn't just leveraging intellectual property to draw in new park guests, but it feels like these lands and attractions have an immense amount of thought and creativity put into them. It feels like this was designed by fans of these properties who have real creative passion and excitement for what they do, which is precisely why I think that Dark Universe may actually be a risky move for Universal, specifically because it caters to a niche audience. It's a land based on horror, which to my knowledge hasn't really been done on the scale before, and between the theme and Universal emphasizing its intensity, this may very well be the least traveled area of the park by the general park population. As a theme park fan, that may surprise you since this is what park fans seem most excited for, but today, I wanted to discuss what Universal has revealed, and why this might actually be a hard sell to most park guests. If, for some reason, you were watching this video and have no context as to what the Universal Classic Monsters are, then let me first state that this encompasses a number of iconic horror films produced by the studio, starting with the 1925 version of The Phantom of the Opera, and roughly ending in the mid-1950s. While many films during this period were forgotten, many have become genre-defining cinema, really popularizing film adaptations of novels like Dracula and Frankenstein, and adapting old tales of werewolves into the icon of the Wolfman. Universal's classic monsters include original creations too, such as Gilman from The Creature from the Black Lagoon, which itself is a product of Universal's pivot to science fiction horror in the 1950s. While many of these stories were self-contained, many proved to be so popular that many sequels were developed, which often went very outside of the source material, and it even got to the point where monsters were crossing over into different event films, and eventually even comedies, with Abbott and Costello. Long before the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Universal's monsters were bringing audiences into theaters with the promise of epic and ferocious showdowns between them. What's also important is that Universal's monster films have transcended their studio brand, with their specific interpretations of these characters becoming important staples of American culture. Prior to these films, symbols of Halloween were pretty much limited to witches and pumpkins, but it was Universal's very specific version of Frankenstein's monster with his black suit, heavy shoes, square head, a stapled hairline, neck bolts, and green or gray paint that has become the standard interpretation culturally and especially in Halloween decorations 
even though the monster is very different in both look and intellect from the original novel. Bela Lugosi's performance as Dracula, dressed as an eccentric Transylvanian count, has itself become the stereotypical portrayal of Dracula since, despite being another very specific interpretation, and while most Halloween icons are European in nature, you can thank The Mummy and its sequels for establishing mummies as seasonal icons too, even if they're obviously very specific to ancient Egypt. The majority of people who have never seen a classic monsters film still recognize these characters, which itself is a really strong statement of their brand identity. Throughout the decades after the height of this period, the studio attempted to revive the characters and properties with new interpretations, with 1999's The Mummy being particularly notable, revising the plot of the 1932 original into an Indiana Jones-style pulp action film. Another notable entry was 2004's Van Helsing, which was panned by critics and likely only made a modest profit, destroying any chances for a sequel or universe-adjacent films. It appears that Universal had high hopes for this movie after the success of The Mummy and its sequel, because before the film released, there was a rumor of a Van Helsing attraction coming to Islands of Adventure in the expansion plot on the west side of the Lost Continent. While yes, this was just a rumor flying around on forums in 2003, the ride was said to have taken place in a castle, probably either Dracula's or Dr. Frankenstein's, and would have utilized the Kuka RoboCoaster technology that eventually became Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. It seems like too much of a coincidence to not be true, and Universal Hollywood even opened an all-day, year-round scare maze called Van Helsing Fortress Dracula, which operated from 2004 through 2006, so clearly there was interest. Dark Universe's main attraction is known as Monsters Unchained, the Frankenstein Experiment, which Universal has revealed revolves around Victoria Frankenstein, a descendant of the original Doctor, who has trapped the various monsters who essentially break out as you visit the manor. If you look closely at the concept art, it does clearly show another KUKA-style attraction, so while the theme and story are quite a bit different, it appears that Universal is finally building something really scary that I believe may be a huge turnoff to many park guests. You might wonder though, hasn't Universal been pretty successful with the monsters in its parks before? Sure, there was the Monsters Cafe in Universal Studios Florida, and while the theming was a cool tribute to the classic films, the only scary aspect of the restaurant was the abysmal food quality. Otherwise, you had the monsters included in Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review, which is definitely not scary as it was a comedy show, and the same goes for the various versions of the horror makeup show as well. In 2009, Universal Hollywood debuted Creature from the Black Lagoon, the musical. What? And while Revenge of the Mummy is thrilling throughout its various iterations, I still would not really consider these to be explicitly scary rides. In fact, with the exception of haunt events, horror-themed attractions and theme parks are pretty rare, other than the occasional ghost train, and the closest that Universal has ever come to a true horror attraction is ironically, Forbidden Journey. In my opinion, there's not really a successful precedent of truly scary horror-themed rides on a large scale, and so what Universal is debuting here is a pretty radical experiment within the industry. Entering the portal, park guests step into a graveyard, which, traveling further, reveals the village of Darkmoor. To me, this land looks incredible because of its detail and atmosphere, with various shops and a restaurant known as Das Steakhouse, a fun pun for a name which brings you into a lair of vampires. Another interesting element is back in the forest, where the Burning Blade Tavern has a facade with a burning windmill, which is a truly outstanding effect that again shows how Universal is really embracing creativity in this park, doing cool things just because they can. Darkmoor includes two attractions, the lesser of which is Curse of the Werewolf, a spinning coaster that Universal says follows a similar story from the Wolfman, and brings you into a close encounter with a werewolf. The concept art for this is intentionally made to look pretty intense, but what I did find interesting was how the promotional material described this coaster, stating that it's an incredibly thrilling, but family-friendly experience. With Monsters Unchained, however, Universal was pretty straightforward. It's terrifying, and they emphasized that it's a PG-13 ride, in which experiencing it would be a badge of honor, so that you can brag that you've been on one of Universal's scariest attractions. Despite this, the rest of the marketing material emphasizes that Darkmoor is family-friendly, including various photo ops with the monsters, and even a makeup experience that will transform you into the horror of your choice. 
It's actually pretty striking how often family friendly is brought up here, I think because Universal knows that the intense theme can be a hard sell. It's clear that Epic Universe is meant to draw in crowds that traditionally only went to Disney, and perhaps occasionally added a day or two of Universal parks, but Disney crowds are also very averse to thrills. You could see it with the low wait times for Mission Space, or the legendary reputation of Alien Encounter, an attraction considered to be so scary that it was replaced due to complaints. I certainly don't see that crowd stepping into Frankenstein's Manor, or on the other hand, I don't really see the general park population seeking this land out either. You might point to something like Halloween Horror Nights, which true, it is absolutely the most popular theme park event pretty much anywhere despite its intensity. However, while most parks fans love the event for its detailed sets and high production value, I would posit that the majority of people going don't care about this at all. For them, it's a social event that they go to just because they're chasing an adrenaline surge near Halloween. It's like a group of people going to a Six Flags park, not because they can appreciate a good coaster with all the nuance that comes with it, but rather because it's just a thrill to them. I believe that the success of Halloween Horror Nights really comes from its proximity to Halloween, which itself is a cultural driver towards a thematic season for horror, and so people go just because it's the thing to do, not because they appreciate the artistry and lore that goes into it. Darkmoor does not have this cultural drive for seasonal thrill seekers, and while it may have a good degree of crossover with people searching out Universal's bigger, more thrilling experiences like their coasters, I still think that the audience is quite limited, and will be turned off by knowing that the land's main ride is meant to be so intense. On the other hand, another argument that could be made is that audiences may actually seek this land out because these characters are so iconic. As I discussed earlier, Universal's specific interpretations of these characters often transcend their brand, and have become the standard interpretation in broader American culture, and so just through sheer familiarity, people might seek out this land specifically because these characters resonate so strongly through their iconography, despite the advertised intensity of the main attraction in the land. Then again, while I loved Universal's interpretation of these monsters for intense, gory houses or Halloween Horror Nights, these seem to have actually been some of the least popular houses over the course of the last four events, even though there's a very dedicated fan base for them. The goal of this video was not to really make any specific conclusions about whether this land will be popular or not, but rather to throw out different points to consider and see how this land works out among everything else once the park opens. I would certainly like for this to be successful, and Universal seems to really be putting a lot of love and care into bringing this land to life, but I have a feeling that among all the other lands, this one will likely have the least amount of foot traffic. Even when you look at the model, if it were not for the layouts of the coaster, this land would by far be the smallest in the park by a considerable degree, which to me indicates that Universal is cautiously testing its cultural appeal. Of course, if this land really resonates with you, then it might be better that park crowds travel here a lot less, but if this is the case, it might also mean that the land does not get any future investment after the park opens. While we will have to wait and see how this pans out, at the very least, this is just some food for thought in the meantime, and from a design perspective, this project does really seem to be one of Universal's absolute best. This was just a small video that I thought would be fun to throw together, so if you want to do me a favor of leaving a like, that would very much be appreciated. As always, if you want to stay updated with the channel, I also recommend hitting the subscribe button with bell notification so as to be alerted to new videos as they release.